That song is, is an ode to my grandpa George, who just had a massive heart attack when he was 35. And I would just think, but what? <laughs> and it would drive me mad. What, like, why would you say but if there is no what after the but? But I wanna believe this urgent me. What do you think about this? Wow, some impressive squashes, pumpkins. What have you, yeah, did you grow those? In that video, there's like some clips, you know, of kind of setting up and stuff like that. And you can hear me playing one of the songs from Blackberry. And I, I was thinking about playing it in the video, but then I kind of thought, maybe I'll wait until this record comes out to document those songs on video. Hey, Peter. Wow, look at it. Look at that room there. How are you? Hey, good. Nice to see you again. I love your album, Peter. It's beautiful. And um, what a beautiful, what a beautiful song, What Happened to Your Heart is. It's a ballroom song, almost a ballroom. Well, oh, I'm glad to hear you say that. That song is, is an ode to my grandpa George, who... Um, just had a massive heart attack when he was 35. What happened to your heart? Was it just faulty from the start? He eventually got a pacemaker, like a metal thing, to pump his heart, pump his blood. But he really was kind of not the same um, and, and so I, that was all I knew him as. I never met him before he had this big um, heart injury. And then when I was a kid, my mother used to say that Grandpa George was the first male on that side of the family to live past the age of 35 because of heart failure. Yeah, yeah. And when I was a kid, 35 just sounds like it's, you know, forever from now. Um, but now... I'm approaching the age of 35, and last year, or sometime a year or so ago, myself and my wife were on our way to a wedding, driving through rural Ireland, and uh, I just started thinking about my grandpa. I was like, wait a second, what was that that my mom said about the males and the family? And wait a second, you know, I just, it all started, it was like it all hit me at once. And... Um, I just found myself wondering, like, what is that about? What is that about? And what is the situation here with nature versus nurture? How much of it is just fate and what you're given, you know, was it a faulty heart from the start? Or is, it, is there something in your life, some patterns in our familial history that um, are leading to these heart problems? Yeah. It, it all just kind of came flooding to me and, and, um, and I, I had this idea for a song and we're, we're at this wedding and uh, we had a guitar with us because we were playing a bit of music at the wedding. But after the ceremony, I still had this idea for a song and I said, Bridget, you know, everyone's on the dance floor dancing and I'm like, I, I'm sorry, I need to just go. Uh, I'll be back. I'll be back in an hour. And, <laughs> and I went to the little hut we were staying in and I just wrote the song really quickly, and then went back to the wedding and partied. <laughs> so Grandpa George, while you're here, would you please just tell me what happened to your heart? Can you still recall where and when you wrote Let It Go? I was in... So last year, we moved to London, uh, but before we did that, we gave up our place here in Galway, and we stayed with my wife's mother, my mother-in-law, for a couple months um, to sort of try and save a little bit of money before we make this big move. Mm -hmm. um, and um, so uh, during that time, my wife, who's also a musician, Bridget May Power, she was doing a little bit of a tour in the U.S. So I was alone with um, her son, my stepson, at my mother-in-law's house. And, and so, you know, I'm staying in this house. And that is, in fact, when a, the majority of these songs got written. Um, 
because I'm in someone else's house. I don't have my daily responsibilities of looking after my own house. You know, I, I try and help out with my mother-in-law, but you know, she, of course she's very sweet and it's like, no, oh, don't worry. I'll do the dishes. So all of a sudden I've got a lot more time on my hands. And, um, and, uh, I remember one night, uh, I had put Sean to sleep. He was eight years old and I was just sort of, sometimes I would sit in the next room and just sort of very softly play music. And, and oftentimes that would help him go to sleep. Um, and that song just kind of came out one day and I just remember playing it so softly. There was a time when I fully embraced him But now I can hardly face him And I had been, I had been thinking a lot about um, just the, the technology and stuff, you know, I, I kind of, for many years, I didn't partake at all in any social media or anything. Mm -hmm. And I was very much battling in my head what my, what my relationship is with this stuff and what our relationship is with this stuff. Um, and it's, and, and, and I think a lot of it's, it's very easy for me to, um, to vilify social media and, and see the bad in it, but also, my career is sort of, you know, uh, I don't know if you remember MySpace. Yeah, yeah. MySpace is what got my career started. Yeah. So I, in a way, I owe my career to these technological innovations. Um, and so, yeah, I'm just, just, just trying to piece together all this stuff and what role it has in my life and what role it has in all of our life. And um, there's, a, there's a great um, sort of philosopher who was very... He was very famous for um, sort of bringing Eastern philosoph philosophical ideas and, and sort of speaking about them in a way that the Western world could understand. His name's Alan Watts. Um, I was really big into him earlier in my 20s. But he used to, one of his main points that he used to drill in was, you can't have the light without the dark. How would you even know what the light is if not comparing it to the dark? You know, this is the yin and the yang. These things come together. And why is it that we seem to think we can just, one day we'll be able to figure it out so that we can have all the good without any of the bad? Like, yeah. I don't know, guys, but that just might not ever happen. <laughs> it is all, it all comes together. Yeah, true, true. Yeah, and the song, But, I love it. It's funny. It, it, it is, yeah. yeah. Your boat might keep you afloat, but does it let you fly? Do you just leave that part to your kids now? Well, that song came about because um, I, you know, when I was, you know, when you're like a teenager, you start to sort of try and differentiate yourself from your family and your parents, you know. And oftentimes, I don't know, for me, I started to get quite angsty and little things that my parents would do would drive me mad. You know, oh, oh, why, mom, dad, why do you have to do that that way? Ah, oh. and uh, one of the things that used to just drive me so mad that my dad would do, and it's, it's, it sounds so silly, but, but he would, uh, he would say a sentence and then end it with but. So he'd say, my favorite record that I've heard in a while is this, but... And I would just think, but what? <laughs> and it would drive me mad. What? I'm like, why would you say but if there is no what after the but? And um, it just drove me mad. But then eventually I realized I was doing it too. Of course, like we all, we all kind of realize after a while, like, oh yeah, I am actually just becoming my parents. <laughs> um, and then... Um, uh, yeah, and then, but I also started to see it as a rather beautiful thing. I kind of, it's a way of making a statement and then sort of saying, but that's just my opinion. You know, it sort of opens it up. Instead of saying, oh, yeah, this is, this is my favorite record. It's like, this is my favorite record. But the, the implied there is that that's just the way I feel. Yeah. And uh, yeah, so I started to love it. But I wanna.
Last time we met was in uh, November 2019. That's right, yeah. We did a very nice recording in that old church in Leeuwarden. And it's nice to have that memory of 2019 while listening to the album Blackberry. It's, uh-huh. it's, 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 it's in the same mood, I would say. Yeah. Well, I recorded that record last summer. And actually, I remember when we were doing, um, when we were shooting that video, in that video, there's like some clips, you know, of kind of setting up and stuff like that. And you can hear me playing one of the songs from Blackberry. And I, I was thinking about playing it in the video, but then I kind of thought, well, maybe I'm not quite ready to, uh, maybe I'll wait until this record comes out to document those songs on video. Um, but yeah, those songs were, did come out before the world sort of changed yeah. um, with all of this stuff. So yeah, that's a very, very good observation. Forgive me if I sinned. Forgive me if I know not right from wrong. So. How did your life change because of those uh, months of uh, Corona? Being uh, a composer, being a musician, I can imagine that yeah. life goes on. Yeah, it does. And I've, I've had, you know, a number of uh, projects that I can work on from home, uh, recording projects. Um, but I also have, you know, for, for the last several years, a lot of my attention has been... Um, uh, taken elsewhere and in, in particular as, as can kind of be seen woven throughout this record I've gotten really into um, foraging and wild plants and spending more time in nature and not just sort of looking at nature as this beautiful serene thing but really interacting with it getting to know what all the different plants are and what their histories are being used by people especially before um, the agriculture and industrial revolution when people used all these plants for stuff because it's all they had <laughs> so yeah. um well you really surprised me and it's also nice to watch how to create a, a blackberry basket yeah that's yeah, a yeah, nice yeah. video i love it blackberry diary oh part three how to make another type of blackberry bramble basket I've been using this plastic container with a string tied around it to collect my blackberries and my goal for today is to make a similar type of container but out of blackberry vines. It blows me away that you can do stuff like this that's so rewarding, so useful, so therapeutic and it's just with stuff that's, uh, you know, might even be considered a nuisance. Blackberries can be a rather inv- invasive plant. Where they grow, they really grow. Yeah. And sometimes they're really, you know, getting in the way of someone's tidy, nice yard. Um, and so, you know, what a beautiful idea that rather than, you know, just just spray them with toxic chemicals or chop them all and throw them away. No, chop them and make a basket, you know, use them for something. <laughs> and, um, and and it's it's I, I just personally find it so rewarding. I think I think for some people who live in a very urban setting, who maybe just aren't interested in um, the natural world world very much. They see that and it looks sort of stupidly primitive or something. I need to show you a thing. Hang on, hang on. I need to show you uh, a thing. You're a farmer yourself and you showed how to go along with plants like, for instance, the blackberry. But I need to show you one thing as well. Okay, sure. What do you think about this? Wow, some impressive squashes, pumpkins. What have you, yeah, did you grow those? I grow them, yeah. Wow. And well, of course, this is a beauty. That's gorgeous. Um, and this is, well, okay. It's a nice one. <laughs> this is a beauty and this is, well. <laughs> <laughs> and this is, of course, this is an ugly one because of all the stripes and all the wounded oh, on the skin. Oh, it's beautiful. But I love it, and and it tell it tells me so much about myself, but also about the environment. Yeah, 
Yeah. Yeah. Well, good for you. Did you start doing that once once this situation came or were you already growing stuff before? Well, I was trying to and because of, well, being stuck at home for most of the time, I just started planting pumpkins and I love it. It's great because you never know what you get from uh, a plant, <laughs> of course. Yeah. You know, it's interesting because I, as much of a plant lover as I am, like I'm, I read about plants all the time. I spend a lot of time um, thinking about and working with plants, but I don't really grow things. I'm much, um, and, and when I, the times I've tried, I have a, a little a small herb garden and the herbs grow fine, but herbs are very easy. You, you stick them in and they, they grow. Yeah. Um, but I don't really have what we call a green thumb. You know, mm. I'm not yeah. really that good at tending to plants, but I spend more time interacting with the things that are out growing by themselves. If you know what I mean? Yeah, of course. Um, but I, I, I obviously, you know, I love a good farm and some good produce. Yeah. Um, and I'd love to, I'd love to be able to do some more of that myself one day. But for the moment, I'm more invested in getting to know the stuff growing in the wild. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, plastic container. I guess I won't be needing you anymore now that I've got my Blackberry container. So, I guess I'll put you into the recycling. I mean, you've helped me collect so many blackberries. I'm gonna miss you. Maybe I'll just keep them both. I would like to thank you very much. Even while doing the preparation for this interview, uh, reading and listening to the album and seeing the videos, you energize very much. Well, thanks for receiving it, you know? There would be no music without the receiver of the music, so um, that makes me feel like it's all worth the while. 